join us on singing hymn number 697. 697.
just remember Donna this morning, she's a little under the weather. Um, and just just a wonderful day to celebrate our veterans, what they've done. I get real emotional about this. <laughs> we wouldn't have this country if it wasn't for them. And Amen. what our forefathers did. So we just appreciate them and what they've done for all of us. Amen. And we are feeding all of veterans after service. Or please right. stay, everybody. Please stay. A um, couple of things. Uh, a joy. Um, if you have, can't see the altar this morning, I know Ann did the altar. It's just so beautiful. Yes, and I always look forward to her Thanksgiving altar table because it's over the top. Thank you, Ann. And um, would like a uh, prayer for Jim Griffith. Um, as he has had some falls this week, and but he's here this morning. You can't keep a good man down, so we're glad to have him here this morning because he's a veteran student. It is good to see you. I have joy. Uh, Charlotte had her 65th birthday yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> spoken prayer request that you'd still like to give to God. Let it be known by your sign of surrender. Lord, it's been a tough week. But you've been with us every step of the way. And in knowing this, we know that we can truly surrender all. Let us pray. Father, first of all, simply thank you. Thank you for being who you are. Thank you for being the same God yesterday, today, and forevermore. The same God that through his son healed the sick, raised the dead, is still alive and well today. And Father, you have heard your children. Some need healing. And great physician, we ask that you reach down and touch and heal as only you can. And Father, some may be apprehensive about tests that they may have to go through, whether whatever it is, Father. Ease their minds. Send your spirit to comfort them and reassure them that they will not go through those tests alone. For those that are sitting at home sick, for those that may be sitting in nursing homes feeling like they have been left there alone, remind them they're never, ever alone. Father, for our veterans who raised their right hand and said that they would defend the Constitution even if it meant their life, we thank you. We thank you for this great land that we have the freedom to gather together this morning and worship and pray openly without worry of being arrested. We thank you for that freedom, and we thank you for those who serve to defend it. Now, Father, you have heard these requests, and we leave them with you, whether spoken or unspoken, and we claim them done by praying in the manner in which your Son taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven, give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. As you are able, please stand as we reaffirm our faith with the apostles. Traditional Apostles' Creed, located on page 881. <clears throat> 
I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
Some might have went off to war, some may not have, but they were prepared to go if have to be. So they learned to be part of a group. They learned to have to follow somebody, follow a person that had to have a leader. Veterans, fall in. Come on, come on ladies. Mitchell Global Methodist Church. <laughs> Detail at ease. And we thank you for your service. We have just a small gift for you. And we have more veterans that are here, so I will list their names, but uh, we'll get their gift to them. Riley, I'm going to have you and Amara give it out to them, and I want you to shake their hand and say, thank you for your service. Joel Locklear. Shake his hand and say, thank you for your service. Cal Davis. Right here. Shake his hand. Thank you for your service. Thank you, honey. Jim Hunter. Jerry McGuire. This way. Okay. Go around this way. This will be all right. We'll go around this way. Come this way. He's hiding. <laughs> Very good. Now we have a visitor that's a veteran. It's Cal and Diane's son. John Davis. And we have one more, Amara. No, two more. I'm sorry. Jim Griffith. Right there. Last one that we have here today, James Alexander. Let's let's clap for all these guys. And I'm gonna the rest of them. And the ones that are not with us today is Ralph Shepard, Paul Thomas, David Goodwin. Tommy Branch, 
Larry Thomason, and Wallace Tucker. It's for Thelma. Thank y'all very much. Detail, attention, dismissed. Okay, children, I have one more thing to tell you. You see, the leader we had, who was, a, who was their leader? Pastor Joel. Pastor Joel, and he kept them in line, didn't he? <laughs> kept them in line. I turned them over to Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what I'm going to mention. They listened to his voice. A leader, you listen to their voice. Well, we have a leader that we need to listen to his voice. Who's our leader? God. Yes, God, Jesus. Jesus. And I want to read you this scripture. It says, he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. His sheep follow him because they know his voice. We have a wonderful leader in Jesus, in God. And we need to listen to him. Pray and listen to his voice. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this time to celebrate our veterans and thank them for their service to us, our country, and the world. Lord, we thank you for Jesus, for him being our leader. God, you sent your son to, to die on the cross for us to save us from our sins, and we thank you for his sacrifice. Now, may, may we listen to his voice, follow his direction in all that we do. In thy name we pray. Amen.
our veterans. And that's what we're going to be talking about. Honoring our veterans. Two very short scriptures that I'll use, and I'll reference another one. Now, for those that are watching at home, don't worry about finding it. They are very short. By the time you find it, I'll be done reading it. So as you are able, and if you are watching from home, uh, please let us know. Leave a message let us, letting us know that you are watching, and if you need any assistance or any help of any kind, let us know. We'll try to meet that need. As you are able, let us please stand at the reading of God's Word. Be reading Romans 12 and 10 and John 15 and 13. Romans 12 and 10. Be devoted to one another in love. Honor one another above yourselves. Romans 15 and 13. Greater love hath no one than this, than to lay down one's life for a friend. The Word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Again, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Now, I've been married almost 38 years, and I don't get to give orders at home, so I, I take advantage of being able to at least once a year on Veterans Day. That's the reason I'm so enthusiastic. <laughs> but we are gathered today to honor our veterans who willingly stepped up and said, I will defend the Constitution of the United States. I will obey all the orders of those appointed over me and of the President of the United States, even if it means my life. That was not a part of the oath, but it was implied. And we were willing to do so. I was not a, a wartime vet, wartime. I was in during the Reagan years, Spent a lot of time in Central America. But we were all willing to make sacrifices for the freedom of this country. Some left children and wives. We all left loved ones behind. And said, I will go to them. We stood to watch. We heard the general quarters bells go off, those of us who were in the Navy. I haven't heard them once when it was not a drill. <laughs> Talk about getting scared. I will be honest, you hear that. The bells go off, general quarters, general quarters, all hands man your bell stations. This is not a drill. You get tense, but you do what you were trained to do. So to all the soldiers, sailors, airmen, marines, <clears throat> national guardsmen, coast guardians, thank you. Thank you. And we find ourselves standing on the shoulders of these giants, these veterans, who willingly stepped into the line of fire, sacrificing their comfort, their peace, and all too often, their lives for our freedom. So let's talk about the, the sacrificial service of veterans. We're here to recognize their service, to show honor to our heroes, and to salute the sacrifices that were made. We owe our veterans respect and honor for their service. We owe them our gratitude for the freedoms that we enjoy. But how do we do this, Pastor? I'm glad you asked me that question. And what a journey has been from being a Navy Corbin to a pastor. So how do we do this? How, how do we show them our gratitude? How do we honor them in a manner that is worthy of their sacrifice? These are the questions that, that I will hopefully answer. First, we need to understand that our veterans have given something that we can never repay. They've given us our freedom. They've given us the ability to live in a country where we can gather here and worship freely, where we can speak our minds, regardless of how foolish it is. We have the right to say it. without fear 
of persecution. Where we can pursue our dreams without fear of oppression. And this is a debt that we can never fully repay. But we can honor them. And that's why we're here today. We can show them respect. And we can express our gratitude. And some might ask, why do y'all always wear those hats of the ships you were on? Or, or that you were a Navy veteran? Why? I think I can speak for all of us because we're proud of ourselves. <coughs> Secondly, we need to recognize that our veterans have not only given us our freedom, but they have also shown us what it means to live a life of service. They've shown us what it means to put others before themselves. They've shown us what it means to sacrifice for the greater good. And this is a lesson that we all can learn. It's a lesson that we can apply to our own lives. Thirdly, we need to remember that our veterans are not just heroes on the battlefield. They are also heroes in our communities. They are our neighbors, our friends, our family members. And they continue to serve long after their military service has ended. They continue to make a difference in the lives of those around them. And this is something that we can all strive to emulate. And again, I feel that I can speak for all veterans. That oath we took is a lifelong oath. We will take it to our grave. Lastly, we need to understand that honoring our veterans is not just about what we say. It's also about what we do. It's about how we live our lives. It's about how we treat others. It's about how we serve our communities. And about how we love one another. Second thing I want to talk about. Showing honor to our heroes. In Romans 13 and 7, the last part of that verse, we find a call to action where it says, give, unto, give to everyone what you owe them. If respect, then respect. If honor, then honor. It's a simple yet profound directive. And it's not a suggestion. It's a command. And those of us that have been in the service, we understand what a command is. It's a command that applies to, to every area of our lives, including how we treat our veterans. Some were treated horribly. World War II veterans came home to ticker tape parades, were greeted with open arms and kisses. Vietnam veterans were shunned, called baby killers. They did not receive such a welcome home. To them I say, well done and thank you. When we think about what we owe our veterans, I want you to think about the freedoms that you enjoy every day, those freedoms that you take for granted. Maybe this freedom right here today that we take for granted, the freedom to gather together and worship, the freedom to live in peace. The freedom to speak your mind. <clears throat> These are not just abstract concepts, but, but tangible realities that we experience every single day. And these freedoms, and you've all heard the saying, are not free. Some had to sign up and pay the price. And they are realities that have been secured for us by, by brave men and women who have served this great country. But the debt we owe to our veterans goes beyond just the freedoms we enjoy. It also include, includes the respect and honor that they deserve for their service. 
This is not just about saying thank you for your service. And, and believe me, we appreciate that. And I will say you're quite welcome. It's about showing them respect and honor in our everyday lives. It's about recognizing their sacrifices and acknowledging their service. It's about treating them with the dignity and respect that they deserve. Now in the scripture that I just referenced from Romans, Paul wrote that. And Paul was a man who understood the cost of service. Before his conversion, he was a zealous persecutor of the church. But after his encounter with Christ on the road to Damascus, he became one of the most influ influential apostles in the early church. His letters, including that letter to the Romans, have shaped the course of Christian theology for centuries. In his first letter to the church at Corinth, Paul writes, Though I am free and belong to no one, I have made myself a slave to everyone to win as many as possible. This idea of selfless service is a theme that runs throughout Paul's writings. And it's a theme that resonates with the service of our veterans. In the book of Romans, we're, we're reminded of the debt we owe our veterans. We're reminded of the freedoms that we enjoy because of their service. We are reminded of the respect and the honor that they deserve. And we are challenged to show them that respect and that honor in our everyday lives. And it's not just about saying thank you. It's about showing them respect and the honor that they deserve. We gave up a lot. Those veterans, how many have spent Thanksgiving away from home? How about Christmas? You made those sacrifices to be away from family so that you could have Thanksgiving and Christmas. I was in Naples, Italy from October to January. I missed my birthday, Thanksgiving, <laughs> Christmas, and New Year's. Oh man, I wanted to see my mama. I'll be as honest as I can be. But I took an oath. So I did my duty. And this morning we gather to salute the sacrifices that were made. And as we Reflect on these sacrifices that were made by the veterans. We are drawn to the heart of what it means to serve. Service in its truest form is a selfless act. It's an act of giving, of putting others before oneself. It's about making a difference, about stepping up when others step back. I'm going to tell you a little something uh, I can only tell you about the Navy. That's the branch I was in. On board ship, everybody went through firefighting training. Everybody. And everyone here remembers the smokehouse. George, I believe we called it. They had to go through it. But the reason we had to go through that firefighting training, because if that ship is out in the middle of the ocean, it catches on fire and starts going down. You got nowhere to go. So all of us had to fight that fire. And when the bells went off and said, fire, 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 and they gave you the compartment location, you ran to that fire. Didn't, didn't think about the danger you were running into. You ran to the fire. On board, and that was on the smaller ship, on board the USS Nimitz, I was on the nuclear response team. If the nuclear reactor melted down, I had to put on a suit, go in that mess, and pull the people out. And if it would have happened, I would have went. Why? Because they were my shipmates. It's an act of giving. Putting others for yourself. This is the essence 
of our service. Their sacrifices are a testament to their commitment to serve, to protect, and to uphold the values we hold dear. I'm going to go back for a second. When I was placed on the nuclear response team, I had to be given a certain classification in order to go down there. And the FBI went to my hometown, talked to everybody that I knew, but did not tell them why. When I went home on leave, <laughs> Joel, what did you do? <laughs> the FBI was all over town talking to everybody about you. I said, I can't tell you. But in considering these sacrifices that were made, we must first acknowledge the physical. We must first acknowledge the physical sacrifices. Our veterans have endured harsh conditions, faced the horrors of war, and carried the weight of our nation's security on our shoulders. We've suffered injuries, both visible and invisible. And they have changed the course of our lives. Some of us have seen stuff that changed us. Some of us were a part of stuff that changed us. Some of us did stuff that we can never speak of. All because we loved our country and those within it. Some of us are going through claims right now. My cancer, possibly caused by the bad water at Camp Lejeune. My artificial knee, caused by running up and down ladders. We all have gone through it. And there are some who have invisible injuries. PTSD is real. It's real. It used to be called battle fatigue. It's real. And many of our veterans cannot get the help that they need. And that's a shame. And this physical sacrifice is a testament to their resilience and their unwavering, unwavering commitment to this great nation. The words of C.S. Lewis resonate deeply here. He wrote, the real test of being in the presence of God is either that you forget about yourselves altogether or see yourself as a small, dirty object. Our veterans in their service have often forgotten themselves, focusing instead on the mission at hand or on their comrades or shipmates or fellow soldiers, airmen or marines, and on the people that we are sworn to protect. They have seen themselves not as individuals, but part of a greater whole. Whenever I see another sailor, yes, wearing our hats, I will automatically say, how you doing, shipmate? Whether I was on a ship with him or not. Large community. This mindset, this willingness to forget oneself in the service of others is a profound form of sacrifice. But the sacrifices made by our veterans extend beyond the physical. There are also emotional sacrifices. Remember I talked about PTSD? The toll of service is not just borne by the body. It's also borne by the mind and the heart. Our veterans have experienced loss, grief, and trauma. They've missed birthdays, anniversaries, and milestones. They've left behind loved ones, not knowing if they would return. And these emotional sacrifices are a testament to their courage and their love of nation. Finally, we must recognize the societal sacrifices our veterans have made. They've returned home to a world that doesn't fully understand their experiences or their depth of sacrifice. They've struggled to reintegrate or to find a place in society that can seem indifferent to their service. 
Yet they have persevered. Finding ways to contribute. Finding ways to serve. And finding ways to make a difference. And this societal sacrifice is a testament to their strength and their dedication. Again, to this great nation. Now in reflecting on these sacrifices. We are all called to action. We are called to acknowledge, to appreciate, and to honor those sacrifices. We are called to support our veterans, to stand with them, and to help carry the burdens that they bear. We are called to be a, a community that values service, that recognizes sacrifice, and strives to uphold the values our veterans have fought to protect. In doing so, we not only honor our veterans, but we also become better versions of ourselves, inspired by their example and guided by their legacy. In conclusion, the service of our veterans is a testament to the strength of the human spirit and the power of faith. In their honor, let's strive to live our lives with the same courage, the same selflessness, and the same unwavering commitment to our faith and to each other. God's love for us is unending, and His grace is boundless. He has blessed us with this freedom. He has blessed us with community and with the opportunity to serve one another in love. Let's honor our veterans by living out those blessings each and every day. Let's show our gratitude not just in words, but in actions. Let's love one another as He has loved us. And let's serve one another as our veterans have served us. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we thank You for Your love and Your grace. We thank you for the courage and sacrifice of our veterans. Help us to honor them in our daily lives, to serve one another in love, and to live out the freedom they have fought to protect. Guide us in your ways, Lord, and help us to shine your light in the world. In Jesus' name we pray. And let everyone say, Amen. Stand as you are able and join with us in singing hymn number 717. Verses 1, 4, and 5. 1, 4, and 5. 7, 7.
are serving the lunch in the fellowship hall immediately afterwards. And I'm going to do the benediction a little differently. I'm going to go ahead and bless the food because I have seen veterans wait in chow lines and they don't like to wait. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Let us pray. Father, again, thank you for these veterans. Thank you for their selfless sacrifices to this nation. Now, Father, as we gather in the fellowship hall to partake of earthly food, we thank you for your heavenly food. Now, bless the food we are about to receive. Let it nourish our bodies as you have nourished our souls. And let all God's children say, Amen. Amen. See you in the fellowship hall. <laughs>
Yeah. <laughs> 